morning, everyone. This is Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Hope you guys are doing well this morning. It is a an extremely beautiful day here in northern Idaho. It is a little chilly. We've been used to the warmer temperatures, and now it's like 66 and breezy, and I'm sitting here. My lips are probably blue. It's a good jeans, t-shirt, and cowboy boots kind of day. So, good morning, Chad. Hope you are doing good this morning. Good morning, Miss Tammy. It is gorgeous here today. As you can tell, it's a little chilly. Like I was just saying, my lips are probably blue. It's like 66 degrees, and it's just gorgeous. I had a beautiful walk this morning. I am going to quickly invite Miss Mona to join us so she can find the feed. How are you all? And share how you you guys are doing does anybody have any good stories to share any good testimonies to share any prayer requests feel free to share those I'm gonna quickly just alert Mona there we go done and good morning Charles <laughs> okay yeah it's been an interesting week here I wasn't I almost didn't go live this morning um, I've been having some struggles of my own just in, um, I, I felt great all this time and Monday I started feeling really ucky. Um, what I believe is happening is the silicone is pushing through my system really heavily. Um, and it is resting in my sinuses and it is in my muscles. So what could be happening is with all the additional activity that I am doing this morning, um, or recently, I'm doing a lot more self-care, I'm doing a lot more exercise, so I may be forcing things out of my muscles, and when it sits in my sinuses, it is just extremely painful. Um, your sinuses are all up and through here, down through your face, and then it just clogs my lymphatic system, so I've just had such an excruciating headache for the last two days, so it's been, it's been quite something, but it, I feel pretty good today. Um, just didn't feel right when I woke up. Chad says, morning, how did the truck come out? Well, actually, that's a really good question. I ought to take you down there and show you. Um, I think I will. We'll just go for a quick walk. You can see how nice it is outside. And I'll show you because it, this has been the other project this week. You know how when it rains, it pours? This is kind of one of those examples. So bear with me here. And I'm going to show you something here while I... I'm heading in that direction. I finally got the railings stained, and uh, I think they look great. They do definitely make the knots and uh, the wood pop, so that turned out good. That was another project, so that is done. But let me just take you for a little stroll here. We're going to hit a dead spot for a minute. a good question Chad because this pertains to today's lessons too thank you Angela and good morning <laughs> okay more <laughs> that is one side and right here is the other side so um, this is what the mountain man is working on are you handy are you over there working on your your tool You finish it? He is making a tool to make the process of one of his projects on the truck. To show them. Chad asked how, how it turned out. <laughs> well, it's, it's in the process. Yeah, I got a... Sorry. I got a uh, press, so I got that all done. But I had uh, made one of these pickle forks. Um, those of you who don't know what they are, it's for getting your, splitting your joints. Um, I had made one of these a long time ago, used it quite a bit. Well, yesterday when I was working on it, it broke. So, I'm making another one. I'm in the process of getting it, putting this in the forge, and, uh, getting it spread, and getting that shape of the fork that I need, and then I got it. Treat it, and then I gotta get back at that stupid truck. 
No, it's a good truck. A good she's truck. she's a beautiful truck. Good she's truck. so sweet, ain't she? Yeah. Right? Yes? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. So I figured I would share that with oh, you. What? Hi, Chad. Yes. <laughs> Thank, hey, Chad. Thanks for, uh, thanks for all the help and, and stuff. I appreciate it. All the heads up. <laughs> okay. I'm done. That's all right. You were allowed. You're busy. I know. I just figured I'd show them. So yeah, this was started out as a brake job. And as the guy at our parts shop said, we should have, or didn't we know that when you do brakes, you should squint so you can't see the rest. So this turned into not only a brake job, but two stabilizers, two calipers, and upper and lower ball joints on both sides and ro rotors as well so it was quite quite the costly project and um, tomorrow is supposed to be tires so when it rains it pours and um, It's just, it is what it is, you know, this stuff happens and you just got to roll along with it. So that's what we're doing. So one project turns into another and you just keep going and you talk nice to the truck. You got to talk nice to the truck. Chad says, oh, what are you, what are you pickling? Um, I'm not sure what he was using that on, Chad. Um, I didn't say that when I was outside, sorry. Um, I'm trying to think what he was working on yesterday. Oh, I'm not sure what he was, oops, sorry about that. I'm not sure what he was working on that he was using that, but it broke on him yesterday. Um, I'll ask him and report back. He and Austin were working on that yesterday, so. Okay, there we go. We're back in place. And Angela says, haven't caught you in a while. Been quite, just been super busy but doing this just so I can listen in. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to have you. I know it's hard trying to fit it all in. Good morning, Shelly. It is hard. It's really hard trying to squeeze it all in. We got the house listed and then I started doing more self-care and self-care is really time consuming. So, you know, it just, we got to find what works for us. We got to realize when our schedules are squirrely and cut things out. And if that means you cutting me out of your schedule for the summer, I totally get that. They're also available on YouTube so you can watch them later. Um, but we got to, you know, you got to learn to kind of figure out what works best in your schedule and, and just roll with it. And that's kind of, <laughs> kind of what we're doing. Um, you know, we got the house listed. We are still working on projects. He made the door downstairs um, last week that I showed you. He's been working. He has the hinges already for these doors. Um, we were going to go do another project and got pulled away from that with our truck uh, because it ended up up on blocks to do a quick break job and it's been up there since Saturday. So until we got all the parts and everything. So you just kind of have to wing it and we were blessed that the Mountain Boy was our chauffeur or my chauffeur because that's our only vehicle. So certainly makes things interesting when all this stuff happens and I know you guys can relate because there's so often times when you know just stuff stuff happens and and you know saying it is what it is means that you it's something that you can't it's something you can't change you know this stuff it, it happens so you can in my opinion when I say it is what it is it's something that happened that we can't control so we roll with it other people view that in a negative way, I have found, but it, that's what I mean by that, is that it, it, you, know, you can't control everything, and when you learn to let go of what you can't control, life is so much sweeter. So, Jackie says, totally understand when it rains, it pours, look for the rainbow. Exactly, exactly, and I have learned not to curse the vehicle. You know, you gotta talk nice to her, pet her, and be kind to her because we need her to last and we have been she's got over 300,000 miles on her and we have been milking her for nine years and just praying that she keeps running so you certainly don't want to curse her right good morning Nikki and Sanford so I figured we would do a little bit of homestead 
food part two because there was a couple things I thought of and Jill mentioned something that I wanted to uh, touch on. I also wanted to share a little something with you. I talked about natural health and um, different things we can do. Those are rose petals in witch hazel. I am um, uh, I put the rose petals in there so that it would draw out the um, rose essence into my witch hazel which I will then be using on my face. Um, but we can do all kinds of natural things in our own homes. I do a lot of our own salves. Um, I have a uh, uh, this is more of an oil or a salve based um, it's coconut oil. It has um, red raspberry um, extract in it. Uh, it has uh, helichrysum essential oil, tea tree essential oil, and lavender essential oil in it. And it's real good for the skin. So I use that a lot. And that's something that, oh, and it also has um, aloe vera in it, organic aloe vera. So being able to do these things on our own is not only, for me, a fun thing to do, um, but also saves us a lot of money. And I know what's in my products, I know what I'm putting on my skin and in my body, on my face, on my body, you know. So that's really important because of all the toxins and everything that are in everything today. Preservatives um, are toxins. So it's just important to realize that and know that we can do so much of this on our own. Another FYI, so many people have tried to make um, their own deodorants. And deodorants are hard because, especially when you're active and everybody's body chemistry is different, one thing I have found that is really simple to eliminate um, underarm odor is just using coconut oil in your armpits. Coconut oil is an antibacterial, antimicrobial, and um, is great for healing as well. So when you get like heat rashes and things in your armpits, coconut oil is all you need. And I'm finding I do very well with just plain coconut oil. So I just thought I would share that with you. Uh, let me see here. I don't think it's a bad thing with what is happening with the truck. God knows your future and he knows you need a reliable truck. Trust his heart and move forward with it. Yeah, exactly. And you know what else, Chad? We've been praising him huge because had this happened a week before, it would be sitting there for a long time. We wouldn't, we didn't have the funding to take care of this and to do this. We just happened to get a new job and the job starts on Monday or Tuesday. And, uh, we were, we got our down payment for the job. So God's timing is everything. So praising him greatly. And yes, Chad, that is true. And you know, he does know. And I'm also praising God that nothing broke while we were driving things. And, and I, like I mentioned the other week, my tire was bad. And, um, you know, he takes care of us. Timing is everything and his timing is perfect always. So we could use some prayers though when we go to get tires tomorrow because we have to drive an hour and I'm really not comfortable with the t our tires right now, but that's what we have to do. So some extra prayers for our travel mercies would be greatly appreciated and prayers for him today while he's out there working on this for everything to go smoothly. He's got one of the upper ball joints out already. That is the biggest part of the project. The rest is pretty much just putting it all back together. But that was the... The hardest part was the upper ball joints because they're a bear to get in and out. So, um, but yes, Chad, that is so true. Good morning, Terry. Yes, his plan is perfect. And we do need reliable vehicle. And um, we don't know what is ahead for us yet, but we do know that it's going to require us hauling things. So, yes. So God is good. This is all, this all, everything always has purpose, guys. Everything. I truly believe that. Always. Yes. Check your spare before you go tomorrow. That's the problem, Chad. My trip to town the other week, um, I had a tire that split on me and was very fortunate that I it, that it didn't blow on me. It was so bad that when they put it in the back of the truck, they had to let all the air out of it because they were concerned of it doing just that. And I had to use my spare. 
So my spare is on the truck right now and we do not have another extra spare. So that's why we could use some really great extra prayers for tomorrow for our travel mercies because it really makes me nervous. Um, Angela says, my son ran out of gas and coasted into a large safe area on the side of the highway. Yes, God's timing is perfect. And then, you know, take into consideration too, in those circumstances too, sometimes you meet some of the most priceless people who in today's day and age, you know, it's very difficult to find people that will stop and help you along the side of the road. And part of me can't blame them. There's so many scams and crazy people doing stupid, stupid stuff that you do have to be careful helping. Our rule of thumb is I don't ever stop by myself. If I have someone in the truck with me, like the mountain boy, I will stop and try to help. Um, and we try to communicate with each other if we are stopping to help somebody so that, you know, we know what's going on. But we do make it a point to try to help people when they're stuck alongside of the road and are just extremely cautious. But, you know, through those circumstances, we have met some of the most amazing people. Quick trick is the front backhoe wheel the same lug pattern? Hmm. I don't know. So if it is, you take that as your spare. Is that what you're saying, Chad? Interesting. I never thought of that. Angela said then someone that hadn't seen him since he was little thought he was his older brother and stopped to help. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. God is good though and truly, I, you know, when things happen, we don't even flinch anymore. We don't get upset. We don't get angered. We don't get mad. We, we, I, sometimes we just end up emotionless in that, um, you know, we know that this has been a blessing. We know that it saved us greatly, that something bad could have very easily happened, you know, so there's, there's something in everything. I really believe that. Ah, interesting, Chad. I will mention that to the man. That's a rather interesting thought. And I do believe we have a spare for the backhoe, too. So that would be pretty cool. All right. Good deal. Thank you, sir. That is awesome. That will give me peace of mind tomorrow. But I love when you guys share your testimonies and, and the things that are happening in your lives because it's important for other people to hear it, not just from me, but from all of us. We all have stories. We all have things happening, and it's just, it's just so amazing. And it's so amazing to see God's hand in our lives and also knowing how to put our trust in Him. And that is what part two of our thing today is going to be about. Um, it would get you out of a bind. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. And I double-checked our AAA to make sure we were good with that, too. Ooh, I didn't know there was a dog under me. Good night. I almost ended up going foot over. <laughs> that would have been something. <laughs> anyway, okay. So thank you, Chad. That's good to know. And um, good for the rest of you guys to know if you're in such a situation. Um Thankfully, I mean, there's a tire place in town, but we would be looking at about $200 more for a set of four tires there than an hour away. So unfortunately, we, you know, we tried to give business to the local, but, you know, when money's tight, you got to look out for yourselves too. So just taking our time, which is nice. We can just chill and enjoy each other's company and take a nice ride. There's no panic, no rush to get there. So that being said, I think we'll be fine. Plus, um, just prayers for him to get that finished today. He was hoping to get it done yesterday, but that pickling fork broke for him. So with the food, I want to share this with you. Um, do you guys realize that you can dehydrate everything? A lot of us buy, um, one of the biggest things that comes to mind for me is our um, pastes or powders that we use when we're making soups or stews for flavoring. The broth. You can get pastes, you can get powders, but I don't buy any in the store. I, there is one organic brand that I buy, and off the top of my head I can't remember the brand, but I prefer to make my own because most of those have natural flavorings added to them, which means there is MSG in them. I swell up like a balloon from MSG. It just makes my internal organs, my face, everything just swell. It's not, it's not good. 
Um, and it's not good for you guys either. Plus, with that in there, there's so many other preservatives and additives added to these things. And I just don't trust them anymore. I won't touch anything like that. And even the organic one, it makes me a little nervous because it says natural flavorings in it. And I really try to stay away from anything that says natural flavorings. Because the FDA allowed MSG to be shoved under natural flavorings. And there are many people on this planet that are deathly allergic to MSG. And I just think that's a crime. So I want to warn you to be careful of things with natural flavorings, for starters. Um, but you can actually take your bone broth and spread it on a piece of parchment paper and put it in your dehydrator and dehydrate that and it will get powdery and then you can use that in your soups and stews to be able to flavor them and, and add nutrients. That is a huge, huge thing that people don't realize they can do. Good morning, Amanda. And good morning, Anita. So glad to have you guys joining me. We are talking about food on the homestead, and I was just saying how you can dehydrate your own bone broth um, and, and make your own um, broth, uh, powdered broth to add to uh, soup. So it would be concentrated. And you can also make your own spices. We buy seasoned salts, Laurie seasoned salt, and we make our own also. We are getting to the point now where everything that we have, that we like, we convert to making our own. Um, Shall I says, I try to make as much as I can, did not realize the natural flavoring thing. Yeah, it's bad. And it really disgusted me when the FDA allowed stuff to be shoved in there because then how do you know? I mean, it's already hard enough to look at ingredients, most of which you can't read. And, and for us, that's not even an issue anymore because with the organic and the non-GMO foods, it's very clear on the labeling. But to go and shove stuff like that, and, and Lord only knows what else is being shoved in the natural flavorings category, um, I don't even chance it. Do you have the th to thicken the bone broth first? Yes. Um, I make my bone broth, and then it gets like gel, like a like gel like jello. It gets very thick, and you cook it down, that it gets very thick, and then you can spread it on your um, parchment paper and put it in a dehydrator. You can also even put it like around or above your wood stove that it dries it out and, and heats it up that way as well. Um, so either, either option is good. So yes, you're basically making bouillon. Um, we make a chicken bouillon substitute with nutritional yeast. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, because when you can make your own stuff like that, you're getting so much more wholesome, wholesome food and you know what's in it. Um, stuff like that, especially like the paste and the broth, you know, to get it to flavor and, you know, they're adding, a lot of times I even question if there's chicken in it or beef in it. You know, you have to wonder what they're putting in that stuff. So, and, and like I said, the natural flavoring thing is an issue for me. Now we, like I said, we also do our, um, spices. I make my own chili powder. I make my own seasoned salt. Um, we keep all of our seasonings heavily on hand. Um, the purpose of that is so that I can make anything I need to all year long at, on a whim. Um, so by having, having all those seasonings on hand, I can then also make my salad dressings. So I make sure I always have my oils on hand and anything else I want to put in there. You know, if I want to do a creamy like ranch dressing, I can even use my coconut powder my coconut milk powder in there. So there's lots of things you can do by having all these ingredients on hand. And that's why I wanted to point this out because last week I said how I have all of my ingredients on hand all the time so I can make absolutely anything. And when I said that, I really meant that, absolutely anything. And being able to do that is, is huge. One of the big staples that we have too on hand is salt. I have sea salt on hand by like 50 pounds at a time or more because of curing meats. Um, we have a smokehouse. That was the first thing we put in after we were inside the house when we built it was the smokehouse because out here you can't get good smoked meats like we could back east. So curing your meats, there's so many different ways you can cure your meats. 
um, smoke curing, um, you can pickle your meats, you can um, smoke them, you can um, can them. So there are a lot of ways to process your meats to enable you to use them throughout the year without freezing them. Um, moving forward, we're not sure exactly what we're going to have um, for our meats. Uh, the refrigerator and the freezer are options for the buyers of this house. If they want them, they can um, you know, purchase them to stay here. Uh, they are propane. If they go with us, that's easy for us to be able to utilize them. They do not require electric at all, so that's something that we could keep in our trailers and have operating. But in, that, in the event that that is not the case, we may be forced to quickly can our meats. Now I want to jump to something that Jill was pointing out um, and, and was part of Jill's question to me with um, how are we going to handle our foods? Because as many of you know, what we were talking about doing was going from our home to a wall tent and to just kind of camp out for a little bit and figure out, get our bearings and figure out what we're going to do, make sure we're following God's direction, that kind of thing. So. If it's extremely hot or it's extremely cold, your canned goods can spoil. So that's what she was more concerned with um, in addition to the weight. But the, um, you know, because a lot of people don't have the kind of food that we do or that she would. And that was the other thing that she was mentioning was the weights of the food. Because uh, we have hundreds and hundreds of pounds of food. Um, but the spoilage is something that is uh, a consideration. And one of the things she mentioned was taking our canned goods and actually dehydrating everything. Now for us, that could be a little challenging. Well, not right now, not this time of year. Um, winter months, it would be challenging to dehydrate. But when you have sun, um, the dehydrators pull a little bit more power because they use heat. The other thing that's hard with the dehydrator is they need to run for long periods of time. And um, our situation would involve us having to turn the dehydrator off at night and turn it back on in the morning. Unfortunately, because during the evening hours, we would be draining our batteries using a dehydrator. Now, right now, we don't have excessive amount of canned food. Right now is when I would be restocking everything. And I've laid low on that because of our circumstances. Good morning, Miss Diana. Welcome back. I hope you are feeling good today. Continued prayers for you and your family. So that is an option that you can do is actually, you know, taking your canned goods and actually dehydrating them. So you can dehydrate pickles. You can dehydrate meat. You can dehydrate peaches and pears and even your sauces and your jellies. You bet, girlfriend. Uh, we've been praying hard for you, and I look forward to chatting with you a little later to see how how things went. But um, your jellies and your jams, and um, there was something else the Mountain Man said about, well, we have our apple butter, but there was something specific he said the other day about dehydrating, and um, I kind of chuckled that he was thinking on those lines. But Guys, you can dehydrate anything, and that is the amazing beauty of it. We have a friend who's on a, uh, who has a friend who is on a major dehydrating kick, and she actually dehydrated a cheesecake. So when it comes to preserving our food and being able to have our food carry through any kind of circumstance, dehydration is one of the best ways to eliminate spoilage. So that is something that I could do in our circumstances would be to dehydrate what is on my shelf. That would also uh, eliminate me having to worry about my canned goods breaking. Um, I do have a lot of jars, so that is going to be a concern as to just the amount of totes and the process of making sure they stay safe in our travels because that is, that is a necessity for us as our canning jars. Um, just in, in being able, you know, just our meats alone, if we didn't have a freezer, that would be a way to um, 
be able to preserve our meats quickly and, and not have to worry about meat spoiling um, because it's too warm in the beginning of hunting season, that type of thing. So are there things that you guys dehydrate or other things that you guys make on at your place to um, make things easier or to uh, enjoy your uh, homemade um, recipes? Chad wanted to know what you were using the pickling fork for. Separate the arm oh, from okay. the joint. Okay. I couldn't remember what you were using it for. He just asked. He also mentioned, because he said about making sure we have our spare tire all ready to go tomorrow, because I said about prayers for our travels tomorrow, and he said that we, if our backhoe may very well, the front tire may have the same lug pattern, and it would get us out of a pinch. Oh. I know, I never thought of that. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Don't we have a spare for that, too, or is it just a, no. just a tire? Yeah, just a tire. Tire. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Thanks for the idea. Yeah. Here's what it ended up looking like. I know the one side's a little lopsided, but it'll work. It'll work. Diana is back. Howdy. She so, made it back from her travels. Sweet. Good deal. Good deal. So, that's how it turned out. <laughs> i get some water and get back at that truck. Okay. All right. So, that is all I had to share with our food um, but I I love it when you guys share if you guys have unique recipes or things feel free to share them in the comments um, and it, Chad said nice work he said thank you if you didn't hear him the other thing I wanted to share I talked about it last week um, oh, Diana says we invested in an Excalibur several years ago I haven't done as much with it as I'd like to though mostly onions and herbs yeah, that was, we were blessed. I got an Excalibur for 20 bucks at a yard sale. What was that, like three years ago? <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you. We'll see you, everybody. <laughs> Say some prayers. I'm going to work on this stinking no, this good this truck. No, lovely this truck. truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome to our world. It's always like this. Anyway, okay. You gotta enjoy it. You only get to live once, so you may as well have fun in it, right? Even if it is through the chaos. Um, I shared with you guys last week about being able to also have not only your food, but your herbal pantry on hand. Hey, good morning, Lisa. Um, one of the things I also talked about was knowledge and knowing how to do things. And below in the description, you will find links to three YouTube videos. One is mine. It's the first video which teaches you how to open the ports on your body. There are ports on your body that helps it drain. Um, not There aren't too many doctors that know about it, but some of the natural doctors are aware of it. And by opening these ports, by just through massage, there, there are some right here and there are some on your legs. By massage, on those ports, you open them, and what it does is it creates a suction through the rest of your body to allow your lymphatic system to drain. I did not know this until I was going through my healing process, and um, this is what I use to drain um, my face and my sinuses, as well as my lymphatic system. Um, so when you're getting a cold, a sinus infection, you have a swollen lymph gland, this will work and what it does is it helps you to drain those out and it also helps you to heal faster so i want there's actually four videos um the next video next three videos are from heather wibble and or whipple she is a um she's on youtube and i believe she's a chiropractor uh but these videos are very very well explained Explained and uh, she does a great job with them so rather than recreating them I'm just linking you up to her but um, there's some for the face and neck and then there's also just the lymphatic drainage and um, something else you can do when you need to drain your sinuses and your lymphatic system is a mini trampoline or a rebounder jumping on those helps to stimulate the lymphatic system to help it drain so I want to pass that knowledge on to you because this is really good when your kids are getting sick you're getting sick Rather than going on antibiotics that are going to clog your system anyway, this will help. And um, 
You can also uh, rub tea tree oil on as well as on your uh, face to help get the healing going as well for your sinuses. Um, and I also use eucalyptus, so that also just stimulates things. But yes, uh, those are some of the things I use and I wanted to share them, so the links are down below and you guys have been chatting away. I love it. Okay, let me see here. Good to see you drinking water, Glenn. Yes, exactly, Shelly. Yeah, usually he's really good about it, but I and it was even odd to me that he was dehydrated, but he did say that those last two days before he had his ER visit, he was slacking off, but normally he's carrying that thing with him all the time. Yes, he does have it. I do believe that, Chad. He amazes me, and I am so thankful. He's never done the um, upper ball joints before, so I love the fact that he's not afraid to dive in and to try things like this and to make it happen. He saves us a lot of money. Um, we do need to have it aligned once we get the tires on, so probably tires tomorrow, alignment Friday. You know, that way I'm not, we're not ruining our tires. Thankfully, our job is not far, so um, it's actually walking distance, which is awesome. So we don't have to worry about putting extra miles on the truck if I cannot get it lined up on Friday. We can do that next week. Angela says, I've got two dehydrators like Excalibur, but not as good. I dehyd dehydrate veggies and fruit mostly. Awesome. And my mom dehydrated eggs. She gave me a bunch, and I'm not sure what to do with it. Did, was it um, like just the egg whites? Was, is it egg whites separated from the yolks or is it all just the egg? Um, eggs are great in um, like when we didn't have our chickens and we were also when we were living in the tent, it was hard to keep eggs during the summer. So I was using dehydrated eggs to do my baking because I was still baking for these guys. I was making them cookies and, and bread, zucchini breads, banana breads on our grill. So I was using the eggs, and you can make eggs from the dehydrated eggs as well. Um, you just add water and, and then uh, cook them up. So you'll end up with scrambled eggs, obviously, but um, the Mountain Boy actually liked them because for some reason or another, they tasted cheesy to him. Um, and he couldn't have cheese, so he thought that was great. You can just use that as a regular replacement. So if a recipe calls for one egg, I believe it's two tablespoons. I will confirm that and message you as well as put it in the in the comments below. But I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's two tablespoons. And then um, to rehydrate it, actually, you know what, just hang on and I'll go look. I keep them on hand just in case so here we go I can't I haven't used them in a while but there's the Honeyville eggs and it is to reconstitute one large egg mix two tablespoons of powdered whole egg with four tablespoons of water and use for any recipe that calls for eggs when using with other dry ingredients it is not necessary to reconstitute the egg simply add dry egg to other dry ingredients and increase the water measurement in the mixture to necessary amount. So, really easy to use, and that's fantastic. Now, another thing you guys can do, use to dehydrate, if you do not have a dehydrator, is a sun oven or your grill. It may take a little longer. Um, the trick with the um, sun oven is to keep it cracked open just a little bit, so the tabs that you use to lock it, actually stick one underneath the glass so that there's air getting in there. Um, that way that will work properly and your grill I put stuff onions and I think potatoes even um, in my grill on my cookie sheets with parchment paper and just let them out there and they dehydrate in there as well so there are other options um, as far as dehydrating goes but yes um, look at the yard sales I couldn't believe I picked that up for 20 bucks it's like a $350 unit that they use like three times and they they were moving and just decided to get rid of it. So 20 bucks, I was celebrating big time and I try not to get too excited right there in front of them, but that was like a huge, huge find. So learning how to do this stuff 
and having this stuff on hand is so huge. You know, like celery, celery and um, peppers and um, we have some habanero peppers that I dehydrated. I also dehydrated morel mushrooms, which I would not recommend. That is one thing that I would not recommend doing. Oh my gosh, they stink. I've never smelled such a foul smell. It's like a combination between, and I'm sorry, but I'm gonna say it like baby poop and vomit. It was horrible. It, it just was horrible. So don't do morel mushrooms, but you can dry them out on the grill. You can dry them in a paper bag, uh, on a paper bag flat, and you can freeze them as well, but um, don't dehydrate them. So the other subject for today was how do you handle opportunities? What I'm getting at with that is that opportunities come in a lot of different ways. Opportunities are sometimes disguised in your problems too. I'm gonna read something to you guys here and then I'm gonna share some more with you. Um, Proverbs 16, 9, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. This is a series on problems, and it is number five in the series, and it says, don't just see the problem, look for the opportunity. When President John Kennedy was asked how he became a war hero, he smiled and quipped, it was easy, somebody sunk my boat. While it's true that certain individuals have a vision and pursue it, many times adversity paves the way to success. This was the case for a man whose small business was failing. I was paying a share of $5 a day to postpone a judgment on my small factory. Then came the gas man, and because I couldn't pay his bill, he promptly cut off my gas. I was in the midst of certain very important experiments and to have the gas people plunge me into the darkness made me so mad I at once began to read up on gas technique and economics and resolved I would try to see if electricity couldn't be made to replace gas and give those gas people a run for their money. <laughs> that man was Thomas Edison, founder of General Electric. Problems are wake-up calls for creativity. If you choose to wake up and get up, Problems will prompt you to use your God-given abilities, rally, excuse me, rally your resources, and move forward. The truth is, without certain problems, we, end up, we would end up in the wrong place with the wrong people, do the wrong thing. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Out of pain comes purpose, and out of devastation comes direction. So talk to God about your problem. Let him show you the potential it holds. And what he has in mind for you. I love this. The verse again is Proverbs 16 9. It is a man's heart plans his way but the Lord directs his steps. I love that. I absolutely love that and I believe that's a great truth and I think you guys have seen that truth walked out by us as our problems have created many many opportunities for us. Oh, What am I reading out of? This is actually a free devotional at our church. It is the word, the word for you today. And there is an app for, I, I have it on my iPhone. Um, uh, let me see if I have it on my iPad. But you can get the app also and it does have the devotional in there. Yeah, it's called Word For You is the app. Okay, Chad. Um, but this, this is such a great devotional. This speaks to me so much. I get, I get fed by this so, so much. And a lot of the materials I share with you guys is from this devotional. Um, that and Jesus Calling, and I also use Our Daily Bread. I kind of, I, I read a lot, and I really like to be fed by the Word, and I also read the Bible a lot. So, um, hey, good morning, Keith. Semper Fi. <laughs> I, but I really like this, and I encourage you guys to look it up. They are online also, and their website is wordforyou.com. So I love those words, though. You know, to be able to find um, our opportunities through our problems definitely changes the scope of our problems, doesn't it? You know, if, 
just like with the truck. If you looked at that truck as a nasty piece of crap, you know, that's, that's what we're generating. And that's how we looked at it in the beginning of our time here. And every time we would talk to her that way, something else would break. So I turned it around and, you know, she's our good truck. She's got to get us by. So you know what? It's just like with anything else. This house, you saw us working our tail off to get this house completed. And I know God has a huge, huge plan for us. So rather than getting caught in the problem, I'm looking at the opportunities. I'm looking at what's ahead. I'm focusing forward. And that is something that we greatly need to do. And I wanted to jump back. Shelly said she dehydrated zucchini. Zucchinis and squash, oh gosh, they're so good dehydrated and then you can just throw them into your soups. Um, Charles says, thank you for sharing the word. Absolutely and awesome, Diana. She just downloaded the app. The app is great. I'm trying to think if that one is one. That app might require that you have Wi-Fi or a connection to read it. I can't remember if it's that one or our daily bread that does that to me. Um, so it might be a little bit inconvenient, but it, it just may mean that you need to read it when you're, um, you know, taking your devoted 15 minutes or 20 minutes with God, you know, and that you're at a spot where you have Wi-Fi. <laughs> but something else I want to point out in this is, um, you know, how do we handle our opportunities? You know, God blesses us greatly. And, you know, I want to I wanna touch on some things. When we are in deep problems and we are struggling, you know, that is, I pray all the time, but that is a time where we can really truly direct our prayers and we can ask God to show us opportunities through the chaos and to make our vision clear and that we are seeing what we are supposed to be seeing because sometimes we allow our problems to jade our vision and jade our perspective. Now, the other thing is we have learned to pray about everything. So, when an opportunity comes to us like this job and we are able to bring in a, a decent income off this job, a lot of times people's first instinct is, Yahoo, I have money, what can I spend it on? But that is an opportunity that we take to sit and pray and ask God to guide us on using that money. You know our circumstances. So um, we have things that need to be taken care of. Um, we also ran into a situation that uh, a very costly expense came about. But we were also, through that problem, were gifted the opportunity to have the funds. Same with the tires. So I feel it's really important that when no matter what the opportunities are that come our way, whether it is through a problem, whether it is through new work, that we, we learn to pray about what comes our way. Because we were just also offered another job, but it's part of learning to listen to the Holy Spirit as well. The Holy Spirit is kind of telling us both that we need to heavily pray about this other job. This job could be great. It could be a lot of money. We don't know a whole lot of detail about it yet. Um, but the thing is, sometimes the things that come our way aren't always meant for us. And sometimes we jump in with both feet and we jump right out of the frying pan and into the fire. So it's important that we learn to stop and pray about every problem and every opportunity that comes our way so that we can get discernment, so that we can get the, the guidance we need. The other thing is to find out all the details. Like I said, we don't know all the details to this job. As a matter of fact, a text just came through giving me more details. But, you know, sometimes when you're in a problem, 
and like ours, a financial problem, and something is offered to you, your first instinct is to jump on it. But we have learned through time that that is not how God works. And that what he wants of us is to have that communication. He wants us to communicate and to discuss it with him. And I know for some of you that may be hard because it, it really feels like a one-sided conversation. But I promise you it's not. I promise you that he does guide you whether, you know, you can also pray and put a fleece out there. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't know wh where that exactly that is referenced in the Bible um, to direct you there, but I will put a link below because I just need to search for it. Um, that you can say to God, if this job is not right for me, make this happen. So, for example, if this job is not right for us, God, allow it to fizzle. Allow it to become non-existent. You know, there are many things we can do to get clear answers on our direction. And it's important that we do that. The other important thing for me, and I watched the mountain boy with this, and I'm sure I was the same way when I was his age. You know, you get money and you're instantly like, oh, what can I spend it on, you know? And he's pretty good. He does save, but he knows how much he needs to save, and then he has so much left over. And there have been some things that he's been eyeing, so he's been waiting, and now there's an opportunity. And I really guided him, for one, to remember that he needs to tithe. Um, I, We personally feel that that's a really important part of what we are called to do because we have seen life-changing results once we finally understood the concept of tithing. Um, God has made it really clear to us and has shown us that our tithing is, and the way we tithe of the 10% off the top to him, regardless of our circumstance, if that means that I'm giving up money that I need to pay a bill, I can tell you over and over again that I've done that and the money I needed to pay the bill arrived. We are called to do that. So off the top, off of anything we ever receive, we tithe. Next to that, we then pray about our, our funding and where it should go and where it should be used rather than just sitting there in an overwhelmed state looking at our circumstances, for example, and trying to figure out where to go with it. I asked for his guidance and I'm teaching the mountain boy to do the same thing. Thank you, girl. Thank you. Um, the fleece is in Judges. Um, and I will find the direct reference to that. But it's, it's really important that we learn to do that. Whether it's through a problem, whether it's through praise. You know, we may not have any problems going on in our life and we may have reasons to just be happy and joyous and lots of praise. You know, we still need to direct our attention to him and we still need to be thankful to him and um, look for guidance in those circumstances because when everything is happy and joyful, oftentimes we tend to lead down the wrong path because we're not paying attention. So at all times, we are really needing to learn to lean into him and to look for to him for our guidance. And in every aspect of what we're doing. So when we are in a problem, so often through those problems, there are lessons to be learned. But there are always, and I do mean that, always. There are always opportunities through our problems. Our problems sometimes are there to open our eyes so that we focus on the direction God is trying to take us in to that opportunity. Because sometimes we're so caught up in life and in the joys that we're not paying attention to that. But just through our walk over the last three years, it's just been amazing. And, and I thought that that, that um, devotional this morning was really awesome. And it used people that you can all relate to. And that's just it. When you're in a problem and you need to work on something and you don't have the tool He's out there creating it. God gifted him with that ability, and that is how he is finding his opportunity through the problem. So for me, that's amazing, and I love that he is able to do that, and I love that he is able to 
learn and he's not fearful, that he is just going to make it happen. And that is what we are able to do too in our daily walk by just focusing on God and asking God for direction, for guidance, um, all of those things are so important. And when we are heading in that direction and that is our focus, we don't have to worry about circling back and doing something again because we went off on our own thinking that we knew best in how to spend our money and how to solve the problem, whatever it is. Because we're all guilty of that. We've all done that, right? We've all decided that we know how to solve the problem, so we go to solve it and end up having to circle back and go through the same problem all over again. It's, you know, it's just, it's human nature. But I wanted to just remind you guys of that. And when I read that devotional this morning, it made me think of this job and the monies that we have coming in from it. And, you know, how I was initially starting to just figure out things and look at things. And then I went to God and I prayed about it. And, and look what happens. You know, this is a perfect example. You know, I was looking at our, our finances kind of just coming up with a plan, intending to seek God's plan. But it's really good that I seek God's plan because this is the kind of stuff that happens. You have a plan and you have that money all mapped out and you just go and you put it where you think it needs to go and this happens. And then you don't have that money to take care of that situation. So that is exactly why I do look at things, I get a plan, but then I seek direction. And, and I wait, I sit on things. This is a perfect example. I sit on funding for a couple days, and this has proved true multiple times, that when I did that, stuff happened, and it needed our attention, and it needed our funding. So when we pause in life and just don't, act on things immediately, but give God the chance to guide us, you will be amazed at the outcome. And it's just been really pretty awesome to see how God's hand works, how he provides what we need when we need it. And that is a result of being faithful. It's not that we are um, seek seeking it as much as we are seeking to just be faithful and trusting him. We are trusting him for the outcome and are blessed by the outcome as a result of it. And I know many of you have seen such things in your walk also just since I've known you. And that has been such a blessing to me is knowing each of you, have each of you ask me prayer requests and seeing how God works those prayer requests out. It's just, it's incredible. It's incredible. I, I just feel so very blessed by that. We have a lot of prayer requests today. Are you done? No. <laughs> no. He knows I was kidding. Okay. We do have a lot of prayer requests today. Um, Anita is on with us today, and I'd like to ask that you pray for her, for mother's strength, and also for her son, Tristan. Her son, Tristan, is has some really great plans for his life, and he is struggling with some of his academics. So if you could just pray for God to show himself with a miracle in his life and just to help him progress this summer um, in grand ways, um, that would be fabulous. Diana could use some continuing prayers for herself and her family. And um, thank you for praying for her last week. Uh, we saw God's hand very present. And um, I'd like to have you guys also pray. I have a personal prayer request. I am a little bit on a mission, and I have my mother-in-law and her mother um, helping me pray right now um, for the salvation of my parents, Jack and Judy, and my sister Tara, and my daughter, Taylor, and her two children, Riley and Willow. Um, we are just praying for God to touch their lives, whether it's through special people, whether it is um, through the Holy Spirit, but that their lives are touched and that they are brought back to Jesus. Um, it is 
It would warm my heart. It is definitely um, a necessity. And uh, that, is, that is what I am deeply praying for right now myself, as well as someone to really fall in love with our home. So if you could help us pray for that as well, I would really appreciate it. And um, I'd also like you to pray for my friend Stacy, as well as JC. They are dealing with cancer. And uh, also Pat Kenny, who is dealing with heart issues. And uh, I know it's a great struggle for him. He was, um, has cancer. The chemo and radiation has caused his heart to have issues. So he is now having more heart issues than he is with the cancer. So if you could just pray for his strength and his spirit, and uh, also pray for Mona and Ken, and pray for Tammy and her family, and also pray for um, Shelly and her daughter Sarah. And um, Justin and Heather are uh, heading south very shortly, so if you could pray for their travel mercies as well. Thank you, Charles. They were on my list. Charles says, safe travel mercies for Justin and Heather and the family on their journey east this week. Yes, that would be absolutely awesome. Um, they will need lots of prayers and uh, a long ride. Uh, Heather is due in July and they have the uh, three children already. So um, just pray for their travels and for their uh, new journey. Thank you, my dear friend. Diana says, Craig and I will be definitely be praying for you all. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. And there are so many people around us that need prayer. And um, if you could just maybe pay attention to your surroundings. There are so many people. It just, it breaks my heart in communicating with so many people to see so many hurting individuals, but also to see that through our prayers, God is answering those prayers. So if we pay attention to our surroundings and just pray for one new person a week, a day, whatever you are comfortable with, being able to do that, you know, we can make such a change in things and such a change in people's lives. And I just encourage you to pull into God. It's just an amazing, amazing thing. I, I don't, I've said it over and over again, I can't imagine where we would be in our walk if we didn't lean on God for everything. And it's just amazing how he works. And um, we, were, uh, we were definitely under attack last week. I want to kind of share this with you because I was messaging with Tammy and uh, Shelly and Kelly and Chad and sharing a little bit of our circumstances with them. The truck went up on blocks on Saturday. The mountain boy was out with a friend with his truck and um, was almost in an accident. His brakes went to the floor and, and then came back and were working. So we instantly figured there might just be some air in his lines because he did drive it home, just drove very carefully. So mountain man went with the four wheeler to get the mountain boy's truck and um, Austin followed back with the four-wheeler. They came over here. They bled those brakes, got that taken care of. Um, mowers have been up on blocks, decks laying in the yard for the mowers, weed whackers in pieces. It's been like this constant uh, uh, mechanical um, failure. And I know you guys have experienced it too, and you stand there and say, what next? What next, right? But again, timing and God's plan, you know, it, it all worked out. Everybody was safe. Everything is getting taken care of. You know, so I don't want you to be discouraged in your walks when you're walking through life and things just start breaking and problems start occurring. Just remember to try to look at your problems differently, either through the eye of an opportunity or through the eye that there is a reason this is happening and not to focus on the problem, just focus on the outcome because it can really make a difference in your life. When you change your focus to something more positive, it's amazing um, how life takes its turn. 
and how things work out. And trusting the outcome is a huge thing. You know, you start trusting the outcome on mowers and weed whackers and, and trucks, you can start trusting the outcome on homes and futures and everything else. It's just how it goes. So take those baby steps and start progressing. Guys, I love how you guys interact with me. I love how you um, offer your prayer requests and your inspirations, your testimonies, your the t um, tricks and tips that you guys are utilizing in your home. These are things and ways that we can help one another and praying for each other is a huge gift. So I'm so grateful. And for those of you that are out there that do not have a relationship with God, but you would like one or you're curious, please don't hesitate. Um, feel free to private message me, feel free to email me, free, feel free to reach out however you need to. You can put in a comment down below. But in Romans 10, 9 through 11 and 13, it says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And remember, this is something that was offered to all of us when Jesus died on the cross. So don't, don't miss out on your greatest gift that God is giving us, and that is our salvation and his love, his mercies, and his constant presence in our lives. And I, I just hope and pray, um, you know, that if you are seeking that, that you don't hesitate. It's not something to be fearful of. It's something to be really awesomely excited about and proud of. And I would be happy to share more with you. So don't hesitate to reach out. You can email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com. I'm just going to say a prayer for us, and then I'll let you guys get back to your summer. I know it's hard uh, during the summer months to be able to spread your time thinly. Papa, I just thank you for the answered prayers this week and how you're working in everyone's lives, including ours, and just the blessings you've given us. You've given us so much, all of us, and I'm just thankful for my man and the abilities and the gifts you've given him that he is able to do the things he is. Just keep him safe and uh, may things go smoothly for him. And just thank you for providing as you have. Thank you for keeping my mountain boy safe. Thank you for keeping Diana safe and your hand of protection on her and, and her family and all that you were doing there. Thank you for actively working in Tammy and her family's life and Kelly and her family's life and in Shelly and Sarah's life. Just thank you for being present that we can see and we can share in the miracles and the many blessings that you are, are offering all of us. And thank you for helping Charles find out what was uh, causing him not to feel well and for what you're going to do in Tristan's life and for helping Anita. And I thank you for what you're going to do in Pat Kenny's life. Just help him and heal him and allow him to continue to touch lives through his process. And I just ask that you give Heather and Justin and the family travel mercies and allow their future in the East to be very prosperous and may you be extremely present and leading the way. And Lord, I just thank you for giving us the problems so that we can see the opportunities and the blessings sometimes through those problems. And thank you for the, that you are there for us and that you are present in our day-to-day -day lives, that we can come to you and ask you for direction in absolutely the most minute things that we are working on. That you can help us to get up to a 6 o'clock alarm clock or that you can help us to have an extra 15 minutes a day to do devotions and spend time with you. You can answer any prayer. You can offer any miracle. You can heal anything. And we just... Thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives. We thank you for the people you're going to bring into our lives and those that you have gifted us with and just how you're going to work and how you guide us and how you answer us and that it's never just a one-way conversation. Lord, I just thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives this week. I thank you for the many blessings ahead and just what you're going to do. 
And we ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Okay. Thank you guys so, so much for being present and sharing and caring and, and praying and just loving on each other. I, I love the community we are building and I'm just thankful for each of you in my life. So I wish you guys a wonderful rest of your day. And if you need anything between now and next Wednesday, do not hesitate to message or leave comments on the Facebook page. But guys, have a fantastic day. See you next Wednesday. God bless.